Hi there, and welcome to our information session about this Vietnam Hill Tribe Trek and Hospice Project taking place from the 21st to the 30th of September 2024. My name's Jenny, I'm from Different Travel, and I'm here just to talk to you about the itinerary, what to expect on the trip and what you'll be doing, um, and give you a bit more information about things like food and accommodation and all the little aspects of this trek that you might be wondering about. So before I go into the details of that, I just want to run quickly through information about our health and safety assurance. Your health and safety is really important to us, and we take a lot of steps to make sure that you have not just a memorable experience, but a safe one too. So to do that, we constantly monitor and follow the advice of the British Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office. They provide recommendations and advice to British travellers about travel to different destinations. And if there's ever a risk to our team in a country that we're planning on visiting, whether that's a health outbreak, political instability, a natural disaster, etc., we would not operate a trip to that area. Um, if travel restrictions in either the UK or Vietnam did prevent safe travel, then we would look to either postpone your trip and allow you to book on new departure dates or to cancel the trip and you'd get all your money back. Um, please also note that at the time of travel, it's possible that there could be enhanced safety and security measures at airports. Bag drop might take longer. You might need to provide a certificate of health or vaccination. But if anything like that does crop up, we would let you know in good time. So this is an exclusive trip to Vietnam run by different travel. You'll be passing through remote villages and staying in local stilt house accommodation on the way. You're going to be spending time at a local hospital carrying out specific hands-on tasks to help improve the facilities of their palliative care unit. And you'll be trekking in the Pu Luong Nature Reserve, offering a real big range of experiences where, as you interact with the different hill tribes and seeing all sorts of different landscapes along the way. <clears throat> Your return flights, meals and accommodation are all included in the price that you pay for this trip. So in this map of Vietnam, you can see Hanoi up in the north um, and then Vietnam has a very long coastline stretching 3000 kilometres facing the South China Sea. It's one of the most densely populated countries in the world, um, but 80 percent of the Vietnamese people still live a rural existence, which means that cities such as Hanoi are really, really crowded. And you'll notice this the minute you land. It's kind of quite a shock to your senses. Um, as you just see the number of people that are milling around on foot, on bikes, on mopeds, in cars, it's consist constantly um, active and it's really non-stop. So it's really quite an assault on your senses. Um, the majority of the population, 87% are Viet or Kin people, and the remaining 13% is made up of over 50 ethnic hill tribes peoples who mostly live in the central and northern mountainous areas of the country. Each hill tribe has its own unique customs and dialect. And these are some of the people that you'll come into contact with on our tri trip through the northern hills. So this image here is just a little bit of um, Hanoi, um, Vietnam's leafy capital. It's a city of lakes, shaded boulevards, public paths. It's got narrow alleyways lined with shops selling traditional handicrafts and arts. Uh, the old centre is a really intriguing place to wander around. There's just so much to see, so many little nooks and crannies, and you'll discover shops and cafes and things that you weren't expecting to find. It's a really chaotic. They will have a mass of motorbikes swarming through the tangled web of streets. Um, there'll be locals sipping coffee, um, and then there'll be people doing synchronised Tai Chi. There's designer clothing stores sitting next door to old style noodle bars. And all around you, you'll be able to see the colonial legacy of Vietnam's past and right next to it, modern high rise buildings. So the little image here is going to show you where we'll be going to on this five day trek, which is going to take you right off the beaten path and into the remote and beautiful hills of northern Vietnam. Um, this is in the Pu Long Nature Reserve area. And you'll be passing through remote villages and staying at local stilt house accommodation each night. So you'll get an authentic insight into the lifestyle of various ethnic minority peoples who live in the area. And you'll also spend time in the Mai Chao region, working at a local community project. 
Um, you'll be based at a small palliative care unit at a local hospital. And the tasks that you'll be doing while you're there will be determined a bit nearer the departure date. It's going to depend on what they need to have done most urgently. Um, it's likely to include things such as painting and decorating, gardening, other bits of hands on refurbishment. So no experience is necessary for this. Um, you just need to have a willingness to um, get stuck in and help out. So on day one, you're going to be flying from London to Hanoi on an overnight flight and you'll transfer to a central hotel when you arrive. And then you'll have the rest of the day at leisure. So you'll be able to settle in and explore Hanoi a little bit. In the evening, we'll get together for a welcome dinner at a local restaurant. Um, you'll meet your guides and they'll be able to give you a briefing about the trip to come and what to expect and what you're going to be doing on the subsequent days. On Monday, you're going to be setting off from Hanoi for Mai Chau, which is about a four and a half hour drive. It's going to be a really nice drive because you'll get to see so much of Vietnam just through the window of the minibus. Um, you'll be driving through Hanoi and that'll obviously be really, really busy. And then you'll get out into the countryside and you'll just see Vietnamese daily life going on as you pass by. So it will be really nice, nice drive for you to have at the beginning. In the afternoon, we will be arriving near Mai Chau town. Um, the project site and the village that we're going to be staying in, it's about 25 kilometres away from Mai Chau. And we're going to be staying there for two nights. So in the afternoon, we'll have an introduction to the local community project. Um, as I've said, this is a small palliative care unit and you'll be working alongside the local team, just helping to improve their facilities. So it could be repainting things, gardening, decorating, just other hands on type tasks. And once we have finished that day, then we'll have a nice dinner in the evening and we'll spend the night in a local guest house. On the second day, we'll spend the whole day at the project. And then once you've finished your work um, late afternoon, we'll go back to the village and you'll be able to celebrate your achievements with the villagers. There's just some images here um, as per the previous slide um, of what we will, will have been doing on these days. You can see some of, some of our group hard at work in, in one of the gardens there. So on day five, which is Wednesday, you're going to be starting your trek. Um, we'll first of all, we'll drive to Pooluong Nat Nat Natural Reserve. And that's where we'll start trekking. We'll be going through local villages and farms over undulating terrain. And we'll stop for the night in Hang Village, which is home to a Thai ethnic minority. We'll be spending the night there with local Thai families in their traditional stilted houses. And we'll get there in time for you to have a opportunity to take a stroll around the village and get to see their way of life right up close. So here's a group of our, our trekkers off um, between villages. Just some ideas of the countryside that you're going to be passing through. On Thursday, you'll be going from Hang Village to Kuo Muong. And this is going to take about six hours. It's on a path that runs mostly through jungle. We'll make a lunch stop in a small village along the way. And then we'll go through a variety of Thai villages before we reach Ko Muong. And this is a Muong minority village. You'll be staying in a traditional stilt house overnight and you'll have dinner there as well. So this picture here just gives you an overview of the nature reserve and you can see um, the black lines and blue dots showing roughly where you're going to be trekking to and from. On Friday, it's going to be a little bit harder. You're going to be going uphill into the Pooluong range. You'll pass through a number of hamlets and more minority villages on the route. And then after trekking for about three hours uphill, we'll descend down into the village of Noir, which is a village of Thai ethnic minority people. And we'll be staying in local homes here tonight. Just some other images of, of the landscape, some of the local kids. Um, you're likely to see kids going to school, farmers working on rice paddies um, as you walk through the countryside. And that's what you'll be doing today as well. On Saturday, going from Noir to Cow. Um, you'll be going uphill and downhill through the forest. Um, it's going to be really scenic. There'll be little villages, rice paddies, um, people along the way. And then we'll arrive in the Thai village of Cow and stay overnight in a stilt house. On Sunday, um, this is your final day of trekking. Um, we're heading to Pho Duan, which is about a two hour trek this morning. And when we get to Pho Duan, you'll be able to visit the local market. 
and then we'll continue along the side of the Mar River. Um, that'll be about another two hours going by the river. We'll see paddy fields, a water wheel, and then eventually we'll um, reach the point where the van will come and pick us up and drive us back to Hanoi. We'll get to Hanoi in time for you to check into the hotel, have a good shower, um, and then we'll group for a celebratory farewell dinner. And on day 10, unfortunately, this is going to be your last day in Vietnam. But because the flights generally go in the evening, then you're really likely to be able to have most of the day at leisure before we go back to the airport and fly overnight um, and we'll be landing in London the next day. So a little bit about the climate in Vietnam. Uh, Vietnam has a tropical monsoon climate with wet and dry seasons. In general, the dry season lasts from around about October to April. So you'll be traveling in late September. You're going to be expecting temperatures of roughly sort of 23 to 29, 30 degrees and slightly cooler um, in the evening. Um, weather conditions will vary, but you can probably be fairly sure of experiencing hot but cloudy days and high humidity. And there may well be some short, sharp rain showers and it could be windy at times. So it's quite important on this trek that you're prepared for all weather conditions um, and all different types of temperatures. So you want to make sure that you've got the right kit. And a couple of important things to bring with you would be a waterproof dry bag to keep all your belongings in inside your day pack. We find this tends to work better than a, a rucksack cover. And you'll probably also want a lightweight poncho to keep you dry when you're walking, but allowing you to stay slightly cooler than you would in a, in a coat. When the sun comes out, it can feel really hot and it can be really bright. So you're going to want good polarizing sunglasses, high factor sunscreen and a hat. And obviously um, it goes without saying that you're going to need to keep well hydrated. So the food and drink that you're going to have on this trek will be typical Vietnamese cuisine. Um, due to its mixed cultural heritage, Vietnamese cuisine is quite unlike most other Asian cuisines. Um, the closest comparison would be a mixture between Thai and French. Food's generally quite mild. Um, you will find that chili or chili sauce is sometimes provided as a condiment, but the Thai, uh, the Vietnamese people themselves typically don't eat spicy food. Fish, chicken, maybe some pork are typical dishes served with cooked vegetables and rice or noodles. And the distinctive flavours of Vietnamese food come primarily from herbs such as mint, coriander, lemongrass, There'll be ginger, black pepper, basil, garlic, and things like shrimp and fish sauce as well. So the food through the trek is going to be typical Vietnamese with some Western dishes thrown in as well. Um, it's freshly prepared and it will be plentiful. So you're really not going to go hungry on this trip. You're going to have breakfast and dinner at the stilt houses that you're staying in. And lunch is likely to be um, at local homes along the way. And when we're staying in hotels, you'll probably have dinner at local restaurants. So a typical um, menu for the day would be pancakes, fruit, coffee, bread, eggs, omelettes and fruit fritters for breakfast. Um, you're likely to have something like fried noodles with vegetables and egg or bread for lunch. And then in the evening, you can expect a mixture of things like fried chicken, maybe a meat stir fry, spring rolls, chips, omelettes, um, maybe some fish. There'll be some vegetable dishes. Uh, you may be served noodles and you'll probably have fresh fruit to finish with. So there's some images here just of the food that we've had. This is one of our groups on a on an earlier Vietnamese trek, just giving you an indication of the kind of things you can expect to to eat. Um, in terms of drinking, tap water is really not safe to drink in Vietnam. And that doesn't just go for drinking. That actually goes for things like brushing your teeth, rinsing your mouth out. You really must do everything you can to not um, not ingest the water. So you should only use bottled or purified water. Um, you'll be provided with bottled mineral water on trekking days. And you might want to bring some electrolyte tablets with you, which are effervescent flavoured tablets. They contain salts and minerals and they'll help to replace um, the salts and minerals that you lose through sweating. Um, you can also bring things like rehydration salts, such as diorolite, which are quite good for dehydration. And then you'll be wondering about where you're staying and what these stilt houses are all about. So in Hanoi, you're going to be staying in a hotel and that'll be twin or triple rooms with ensuite bathrooms. And then when you're staying in my chow for the project work, you'll be in a guest house with twin bedrooms and ensuite facilities. 
but during the trek you'll be staying together in village in villages in traditional stilt houses and these images here will give you an idea of what what you can expect um they're raised above the ground because te typically the animals would live below ground sorry not below ground below the house um there'll be a really large room with um lots of mats and bedding laid out so you're going to be all sleeping in in one traditional stilt house um on mats on the floor and as you can see there's mosquito nets hanging up above and here's a group of our trekkers outside one of the houses. So um, I've got the answers to a few frequently asked questions here. You might have some other questions that you've thought of. And if I don't cover off um, what you're wondering about, please do feel free to get in touch with my colleagues in the office. They'll be more than happy to answer your questions. So in terms of communication, a uh, mobile phone signal is probably going to be fairly good throughout your trek. Obviously, it depends on your home network and what arrangements they have in Vietnam. Internet access will be um, pretty much nigh on impossible during the trek. But when you get to Hanoi, you should have Wi-Fi in the hotel. Um, it's essential that you have travel insurance um, and you need to arrange this yourself. Uh, different travel um, can give you the details of Campbell Irvine Limited, who we are an unregulated introducer of. But there are lots of other travel companies, travel insurance companies out there who you can also contact to get your travel insurance from. Um, if you're wondering about the age limit, there's no upper age limit. You need to be 18 to take part in this trek unless you are age 16 or 17, in which case you can come if you're accompanied by a parent or a guardian. And if you have a medical condition and you're wondering whether you'd be able to take part, you do need to see your GP um, to find out. Um, all medical conditions must be declared on your booking form. Um, and if necessary, um, a medical form may be required to be signed by your GP just to say that you are fine to go on this track. Now, um, a little bit about visas. So um, in March 2022, Vietnam, Vietnam reintroduced visa waivers for the nationals of 13 countries, including the UK. Um, the visa waiver um, allows for vi visits to Vietnam of up to 15 days without needing to apply for a visa. Um, this is the current information. We can't guarantee that this won't change. So it's important to look at the visa requirements nearer the, to the time on the FCDO website. Obviously, nearer the time, we'll also update you um, in terms of what's required. Um, your passport needs to be valid for a minimum of six months on the date that you enter Vietnam. And please make sure that it's in good condition and not damaged because damaged passports can sometimes result in entry to the country being refused. So if you're wondering how challenged this trek is, it's graded as moderate to challenging and a good level of fitness is required um, for your enjoyment and your best satisfaction and accomplishment of this trip. Um, you're going to be trekking for quite a few days. And although it's not always very arduous, it is going to be um, six or seven hours a day trekking. Um, the temperature is going to be hot and humid, which is going to have an effect on your energy levels. And the ground underfoot is going to be quite varied. Um, we do have the right to refuse anyone who we feel is not fit enough for the challenge. And this is for the health and safety of the individual and the whole group as well. So please don't underestimate how important it is that you do your training before the trip. The more training you do, the more familiar your body's going to be at recovering afterwards. And then you'll be able to start the next day really well rested and prepared for, for what lies ahead. And you must take responsibility for coming to Thailand as fit as you can be. So if you're wondering how you should train, the most important thing is to get outside and start walking. If you're not a regular walker, then start slowly with short distances. And then as you get more comfortable, increase your mileage and add in some more challenging terrain. Um, you should train with your day pack on because you're going to be carrying this with you every day of the trek. And your day pack will contain things such as, most importantly, your water, and that would be three litres. Um, plus things like sunscreen, waterproofs, a phone, a cam phone or maybe a camera. Um, you might have a battery pack, things like that. So they'll all little by little will add up. And it's really important that you train and get used to having that weight on your back. We're talking about probably up to about six kilograms. So other activities that can complement but don't replace the hill walking are things like running, cycling, gym workouts and boot camps. 
but it's important that you build up your core and your leg muscle strength. So there's exercises you can do for this, such as squats, lunges, planks, push-ups, crunches that will really enhance your training. And those are the kind of exercises that you can do at home and you don't actually need to become a member of the gym for. But it's important that you take your training seriously. Um, arrive as fit as you can be because then you'll get the most out of the challenge. So if you're one thinking that this looks interesting, but you're not sure if um, if this is the kind of challenge that would be right for you. Uh, this is a picture of one of our previous groups and just a little um, snapshot of the type of people that took part. There were people who um, were just up for a laugh and thought that this looked like a really fun trip to do. There were people who loved going on adventure holidays and this was the next one. Um, we had a lady who had just turned 60, but she had her mind of a 21 year old and she was up to do anything. Then we've got people who are celebrating big birthdays, people who have been really successful in business, but want to do something completely different and take a step back from from the sort of stresses and strains of their of their job. Um, we've had people who come on our trips who've never done anything like this before in their life, um, who've always gone on really beautiful, lovely luxury holidays but haven't ever done things like trekking and camping. So pushing themselves out of their comfort zone. And then the um, lady at the front um, is a lady who was really dedicated to the charity that she was supporting. Um, every event that they did, she took part in because she really wanted to help raise, raise funds for them. So all sorts of people do our trips. Um, and so hopefully you're reassured that that you would fit in. So what kind of support will you get once you've signed up? Well, if you fundraise for a charity, then their fundraising and events team will support you through the challenge with your fundraising. They'll be able to give you lots of hit, hints and tips about how to go about raising the money. Um, you'll also be provided with a kit list and a trip dossier. There'll be a training guide and also some discount vouchers. And on the trip, you'll be accompanied by a first aid trained different travel tour manager who will be with you right from the beginning of the trip and professional local guides who speak um, English. There'll be a pre-departure meeting with your teammates and different travel. That might be online because um, this trip is likely to attract people from all over the country. Um, so there's lots of different support for you in different areas. And if you have any queries, you're obviously very welcome to get in touch with us in the office. So um, the costing of this trip, it's a £350 registration fee, which is payable at the time of booking. And after that, you can choose one of three different options. You can take the self-funded route where you pay your own tour cost balance of £1,900 by the 12th of July 2024. And then you can fundraise separately for any charity of your choice. Um, but that's not mandatory. Um, but any fundraising undertaken may not be used towards your trip costs. It needs to be kept separate. You can also um, take the sponsorship option where you fundraise £3,800 for your chosen charity. And that includes £1,900 for your tour cost balance and a £1,900 donation to charity. Or you can take the flexi route where you pay your own tour costs and you commit to fundraising £1,900 for your charity. So just to recap on what the um, what the costs involve and include, includes your return flights from London to Hanoi, including airport taxes, local transfers and transport in Vietnam, all your accommodation um, throughout, um, which is going to be dorm style during the trek and twin or triple share rooms in hotels and guest houses. Um, you'll have meals from dinner on day two to breakfast on day 10, your different travel tour manager, your English speaking guides, and all the project materials and coordination as well. The things that it doesn't include are a Vietnamese visa if required, um, any personal expenses for snacks and souvenirs, any vaccinations that you may need, travel insurance, tips, which is optional, but generally we find that most people um, find that the guides have been fantastic, have really helped them get the most from the trip. Um, and we'd recommend around 40 to 50 pounds per person. Um, and then your personal trek kit and equipment obviously um, isn't included um, in the actual trip cost. If you're interested in a single room, obviously you can't have this in the home, uh, the traditional stilt houses, but for the hotels and so on, um, you can. It's £175 for hotels only. So if you think this looks really amazing and you've always loved to go 
love the thought of going to Vietnam and you think this would be a brilliant way to see a little different part of the country, how do you sign up? So visit our website, uh, www.different-travel.com. Um, you can follow the link shown here, which is trip slash Vietnam Hill Tribe Trek Hospice. Or if you look under um, our trips and go to Asia, then you'll be able to scroll through and find it. And then you just click book now, which will be on the bottom right hand side of the screen, like you can see in front of you. So I hope this has been really interesting and I hope it's been informative. If you have any other questions, please get in touch with us. Um, you can go to www.different-travel.com. Um, you'll find our phone number there, um, which you're very welcome to ring during office hours. Or you can email us on info at different-travel.com. Thank you very much for watching.